going on guys welcome back to the channel so today is a very exciting video because we finally get to change the OEM steering wheel so a couple weeks ago I did order the night runner and work spell quick tilt but I figured while we're waiting for that to arrive we might as well get the steering wheel and the short hub installed so that when the quick tilt does arrive it should be a relatively simple process to just bolt the steering wheel, bolt the quick tilt on, and then everything will be set up already. So, so today we'll be installing the Vertex steering wheel. So I went with the Vertex Deep Checker steering wheel, the 330 millimeter, along with a work spell short hub to go along with it. And I think it should be a pretty cool setup. So uh, right now we're just waiting for FedEx to show up with the packages. I'll go through the unboxing and everything and of course go through the install process of replacing this wheel with something aftermarket. So the OEM setup is honestly one of the best OEM steering wheels out there because you know it's a, it's a good shape, offers amazing support and everything and it just looks really good too. But I figured since we're going to do the whole interior and everything with this car, we might as well get ourselves a nice steering wheel setup. And especially with the quick tilt, it's just going to be super nice for getting in and out of this bucket seat. So one concern I have with going with a deep setup is how close the wheel will sit to you now because you're adding a couple new extensions to this. So from here, this will, I mean, this will go back. So I'll definitely push it back a little bit. But this will add a short hub here. You'll have a quick tilt there and then you'll have the wheel along the deep checker. So. I don't think it'll be that bad. I went with the short hub for this reason, so it should be all right. But as you can see right now, I'm about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and this is where we're sitting right now. So you see my arm angle, I can reach the clutch fine, everything that's comfortable. And this is where we're at currently with this set all the way back though. Maybe we can simulate how close it would be if you pulled this out some more. Well, see, I don't think it would be too bad. I mean, a lot of people also run this setup as well. So if it works for them, it's probably going to work for me. So yeah, super excited for this, guys. I've been wanting a steering wheel for a while, and it should go well with everything I have going on here. I have my Vertex shift knob, I got the bridge seat, I got this whole theme going on, and I think it's going to go perfectly with all that. All right, so FedEx finally came through. Here is our Vertex shipment here. So I got this off Vertex USA. They had everything in stock, so that was nice to find out. So here's our Vertex turn signal extension. Here is our work spell short hub. This is for the Toyota 86 or Toyota whatever. Wrap fix short boss. So I'll open this as well. Here it is guys, the Vertex Checker. So, I can't believe this is in stock and I thought it would take a while. Oh, for that, I did get a different Vertex horn button. I didn't really like the one that came with this one, so I got the classic Vertex Japan logo there. So that's gonna be cool. But anyway, main attraction here. My first really ever aftermarket steering wheel. So, super excited that it's a Vertex, oh man. Oh man, it feels pretty good already. Oh my god, this is insane. I can't believe I have a Vertex steering wheel. This is amazing quality. I'll give you guys a closer look, obviously, but oh my. This is it, guys. I can't believe I have this already. It said it came with a horn button, but I guess it didn't. So maybe it was a good thing I bought this one because I wouldn't have had a horn button otherwise, but yeah, it's a 330 millimeters. Definitely feels small for sure, but it's gonna feel super good to drive with. Oh my goodness, guys. Let's give you guys a closer look. Here's a closer look at the Vertex Checker. So you can see the deep profile there. So it looks super sick in the car. Super light too, and yeah, guys. This is awesome. Got T and Eco Vertex on the back. This is the leather one also. So this goes the best with my setup. Here's the turn signal extension. So since this will sit further away from you, it's gonna be hard to use your turn signal or wipers and the horn button. And then let's crack open the work spell short hub. Of course, you got your documentation. Everything is in Japanese. Oh yeah, so these do include 
resistors. Looks like there's only one though. Got a bunch of different harnesses. I know one goes for the horn. I'm really not sure at the moment. Hope they have more than one resistor though. That might be it. So we have a nut and a lock washer. Here's the short hub itself. Made in Japan. Chromeworks bell. So this will give us limited extension because we already have the deep steering wheel so you kind of put the two together you can see i think this current setup like this it's not going to stick out that much further but once i put the quick tilt on i know it adds like a few inches so we'll see once that happens but also have your hardware so this is going to be for the steering wheel yeah i'm going to figure out what all these do I know some of these match up to the 861, so your horn should work. This is a resistor for your airbag. Fortunately, it looks like there's only one in here, so I'm gonna have to order another one. And I'm guessing, I'm not sure if just one is gonna cut it. I think I need both, both connectors. So my airbag light's gonna be on until I find a second one. So that kinda sucks, but hopefully it's not too annoying to just reinstall because I really want to just have this on. So. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the install. So since we will be messing around the airbag, it's best to disconnect your negative terminal on your battery. So to disconnect the airbag and then your steering wheel, you first have to pop off these covers. There's one on each side. I believe it's the same for the 13 to 16 FRS and BRZ. Here on my 86, they are one on each side. So one here and the other one is by the cruise control stock. Once you get that side cover off, there is this little clip that retains the airbag. So right there, you push these up. So there's one here. I think there's one on the bottom. And then there's one on the other side. So pretty much you push it up like so, and it will pop out the airbag, as you can see. So you just gotta release those clips. So one I got was just the bottom one. So there's actually one right up top there and on the other side. So this part's really hard to show, but once the wheel's off, I'll show you guys exactly where these clips are. Once all those clips are released, you can see your airbag will pop off like so. You have to be really careful not to yank these wires out because you're gonna mess up your clock spring. So try not to screw around with that too much, but you take a flathead, you pry up on these connectors. Oh yeah, once they pop off, they'll pop off like so. Don't do what I just did. And then you have your horn ground wire, so you just gotta pull that off. And also disconnect this white part up here as well. There you go. You just had to give it a little bit, I suppose. Now the airbag's off, and you also have this one connector here, down here. So now once you're at this point, you're ready to remove the steering wheel. But this is a good time to make sure your wheels are straight on the car so that we go ahead and install everything else. Everything is already straight and good to go. Yeah, make sure your steering wheel is straight and your wheels are straight and then you should be good to remove this 17 millimeter nut right in the center. So this is what you're left with and you can see these three right here are those retaining clips for the airbag. This you need to disconnect from up here in this harness. This was from the horn ground and then this was down for the cruise control. This little white connector right here and that went into there. So disconnect all those. You'll have this wiring thing right here and yeah, we're going to go ahead and remove this 17 millimeter nut. Make sure when you pull out the steering wheel though, you don't want to mess and yank this out too far with it because you're going to mess up your clock spring behind here. So just be really careful when you do that. So once again, make sure your steering wheel is straight, the wheels are straight because when you put on everything else, you want that to remain the same obviously. So we're going to loosen this real quick. We're not going to loosen it all the way. We're going to have to leave a little bit on there so that when we pull the steering wheel off, we're not going to just hit ourselves in the face. So there we go. Nice and easy. There we go. It should pop off pretty simple. Go ahead and take the rest of this off. 
So now when we pull the steering wheel off, we have to make sure, once again, to not mess up the clock spring. Try not to move it too much. But pretty much, slowly guide all your wires through. Especially these two airbag connectors here. Like so, and now we are free. So it's moved a little bit, but this was up like this. So yeah, here we go. Steering wheel is off. I'm gonna miss this thing, but I'll definitely keep it just in case. And so the short hub comes with a lot of different connectors for the horn, but here's the one that worked and fit the clock spring connection on my 2020 to 86. So this one has a bunch of ends coming out, but you really only need one. And on this entire connection, the only pin you need is the bottom left. So it looks like the work spell hub only came with one resistor and you need two. So you need one for the one connection to the airbag and another one for the other connection. So at this point, I'm just gonna have to order one or make my own. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this without the resistor for now until I get the other one. And then should just be remove the horn button and re plug this in or whatever. I really want this wheel installed, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But we're gonna install the work spell short hub now. So you gotta make sure your clock spring and everything was straight before getting to this step. And on your work spell, there's gonna be a little indicator dot showing you where it is. And the opening on the top is where you feed all these wires through. So we're gonna do this very carefully. Feed all our wires through. Right. It's like so, just like that. So it kind of goes all the way back has splines that align everything. So you did everything right and nothing's getting caught. It should just be like that and you have all these wires going through. So it's pretty straight there. So included with the short hub was a lock washer and a nut. But I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse the OEM one. So it's not a crazy amount of torque needed for this nut here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use the impact. It's not too much. There we go. Got our short hub installed. It's tight enough. I'll probably do a hand check here and then all you really have to do, in this case I can't right now, you have to plug in your airbag resistors into one each. Plug this end into your horn, which is right here, and then it should work, but I'm not entirely sure. If it's gonna. And then of course, obviously, after you tuck all your wires into here, you will go ahead and put the wheel on and bolt it using the six Allen head screws, and then you're done. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and tidy everything up, make sure my torque's good, and then we'll put the wheel on and see what this looks like. So I tucked everything in here. Really not sure how I'm gonna fit like a bunch of other stuff in there, but for now this should be good, I think. Just cram it all in there. Again, I'm gonna take this wheel off again to get the other airbag resistors in, but for now, since I'm a little impatient, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw the wheel on like so. Feed this horn wire through. We got six of these. And this, of course, bolts right into the work spell hub. No adapter needed. This is probably like the most exciting thing of the install because you can finally see what your car looks like with this wheel. I don't have to scratch it, of course, but. There we go. Wow, this thing feels uh, pretty cool, guys. <laughs> so I think that's it, just pop it in. And uh, hope your button works, I guess. But we're gonna pop the battery connection back on and just see if this works. But otherwise, here is the Vertex wheel installed. So I can still reach the certain signals here, but once I have the quick tilt, I definitely probably can't. So maybe I'll just wait to put those on. But I can still adjust this steering column. Right now it's actually pretty good where it's at. Once we put this sticker on, it's gonna be 
freaking amazing. So I'm gonna do that now for eyeballing it. There we are, golden. Smack that in place. Stick that on in place. Boom! We have our Vertex Japan steering wheel on. I think it actually is a little crooked there. Out of the way. Oh my gosh, guys. We are finally uh, <clears throat> Vertex official. It was awesome in the hand, guys. Can't wait to actually go driving with this thing. Oh, okay. I guess the horn does work. So I guess it grounds, it grounds itself onto the short hub or something, but okay, the horn works. Cool. But... Oh, man, that's pretty neat then. I have working horn, I have <laughs> a Vertex steering wheel. This is pretty cool feeling, guys. So, again, I'm going to be installing the Quick Tilt at some point, but right now, this is where we're at. I might play with this uh, seating arrangement here. But, I think I'm pretty satisfied with this install. So, horn works, everything's good, and this is just super, super exciting stuff now. So, uh, neat. All right.